Despite its size, Equatorial Guinea became one of the wealthiest countries in Africa due to the discovery of significant oil reserves in the 1990s. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today, our exploration takes us to Equatorial Guinea. From its rich culture, diverse ethnic groups and unique linguistic landscape, we'll delve into the essence of this remarkable country. Stay till the end to gain insights into Equatorial Guinea's vibrant culture and cuisine. Equatorial Guinea is a small country located in Central Africa. It borders Cameroon to the north, Gabon to the east and south, and the Gulf of Guinea to the west. Equatorial Guinea includes both an offshore island region and a mainland region. The offshore region contains the islands of Bioko and Anobon. Bioko is the largest island and location of the capital city Malabo. The island has three extinct volcanoes as well as tropical rainforests. Anobon is a volcanic island known for its diverse flora and fauna. The mainland region, known as Rio Muni, is located between Cameroon and Gabon. It features coastal plains, savannas and dense tropical rainforests. About 80% of the country's population lives in Rio Muni. The Monte Alen National Park here protects endangered gorillas and chimpanzees. Equatorial Guinea has a tropical climate with distinct rainy and dry seasons. The rainy season lasts from May to October. The country's location near the equator provides a hot and humid climate year-round. Major rivers include the Mitembe and the Wele. The rivers allow for agriculture, but also contribute to flooding during the rainy season. Its natural resources include timber and oil reserves off the coast. However, despite these resources, much of the population lives in poverty. Before colonization, Equatorial Guinea was inhabited by various indigenous ethnic groups, including the Bubi, Fang and others. These groups had diverse cultural and social structures. The Bubi were the earliest inhabitants of the island of Bioko. The Fang migrated to the region from the north and lived mainly on the mainland. Portuguese explorers first arrived here in the late 15th century. They used the islands as trading posts for slaves and other goods. In the 18th century, Spain established control over the region and named it Spanish Guinea. The territory was divided between Spanish Guinea on the mainland Rio Muni and the islands of Fernando Po, now Bioko and Anobon. Under Spanish rule, forced labor exploited resources like cocoa, coffee and timber. Equatorial Guinea gained independence from Spain on October 12, 1968, after decades of colonial rule. Francisco Macias Nguema became the first president. However, his authoritarian regime led to human rights abuses, economic decline and corruption. In 1979, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo led a coup against Macias Nguema and took power. While less brutal than his predecessor, Obiang's long-standing regime has still faced criticism for human rights violations, repression and concentrating power among the elite. The World Bank estimates Equatorial Guinea's population at about 1.6 million people are made up of several different ethnic groups. The largest group is the Fang, who make up about 85% of the population. The Fang originated from other parts of Africa and migrated to the region that is now Equatorial Guinea. The second largest group is the Bubi. The Bubi are indigenous to the island of Bioko, where they make up about 15% of the population. On the mainland, they constitute only 1% of the population. There are also scattered groups of pygmies, known as Bakas. The Bakas inhabit forested areas and generally live separately from Bantu populations. In terms of religion, the majority of people in Equatorial Guinea are Christian, predominantly Roman Catholic. Some estimates put the Christian population as high as 93%, 
The remaining population is a mix of animists, Muslims and non-religious people. The predominant language spoken in Equatorial Guinea is Spanish, a remnant of colonial influence. However, the local languages of Fang, Bubi and Igbo are also spoken, especially among indigenous populations. Equatorial Guinea has a small economy that is heavily dependent on oil and gas exports. The World Bank estimates its GDP at around $12 billion. Since large offshore oil reserves were discovered in the 1990s, the oil sector has dominated the country's economy and politics. Today, Equatorial Guinea is Sub-Saharan Africa's third largest oil producer. Oil and gas account for over 90% of its exports and over 60% of GDP. The main oil fields are located in the Gulf of Guinea off the island of Bioko. ExxonMobil and Hess Corporation are the largest companies operating here. Outside of the oil industry, Equatorial Guinea has limited economic activity. Subsistence agriculture employs about half the workforce, but accounts for less than 3% of GDP. Timber is another modest export. The country imports most manufactured goods and food products. Its future economic development depends on the effective use of oil revenues, as well as diversification into other sectors. The government has invested in infrastructure and education, but much work remains to reduce poverty and inequality. More transparent governance and stable institutions are needed to improve the business climate. Reducing reliance on oil and gas will also make the economy more resilient. Since gaining independence from Spain in 1968, the country has been marked by authoritarian leadership and political instability. Oil reserves discovered in the 1990s impacted its foreign policy and geopolitical relations. Equatorial Guinea is officially a presidential republic. However, it is an authoritarian state dominated by the Democratic Party of Equatorial Guinea. The current president is Teodoro Obiang Guema Mbasogo, who seized power in a 1979 coup. Mbasogo has suppressed opposition and consolidated power over four decades in office. Regular elections exist but are marred by intimidation and repression. The judiciary and legislative branches lack independence. Nepotism, corruption and human rights abuses are ongoing issues. Its foreign policy has shifted based on its oil interests. It originally had ties with Spain, France and China. After discovering offshore oil reserves in the mid-1990s, it became more engaged with the United States, which has significant oil investments there. Equatorial Guinea also joined the Central African Economic and Monetary Community and the Central African Franc Zone. It has close relations with neighbouring countries like Cameroon and Gabon. However, tensions have arisen with the African Union's criticism of their human rights record. The cuisine of Equatorial Guinea is influenced by its tropical location, Spanish heritage and ethnic diversity. It features dishes that utilize the country's local crops, fish, meat and spices. Some of the most popular Equatoguinean dishes include Yetise, Kanzie, Konkoe Turigbeli and Akwadu. Yetise is a savory pumpkin soup that combines pumpkin, onions, tomatoes, ginger and red palm oil. It can be vegetarian or contain fish or meat. Yetese is sometimes served atop rice or with pieces of bread for dipping. This hearty soup makes a filling meal. Kansia is a chicken stew made with onion, tomato, okra, peppers and various seasonings. Peanut butter is also sometimes added to thicken the sauce. This stew can be mildly spicy and is usually served with rice, plantains or root vegetables like cassava. Kansie is a staple Sunday dish in many households. Konkoe Turegbeli translates to palm nut soup.
It consists of meat, fish or shrimp cooked in a broth of palm nut pulp, giving it a unique earthy flavor. Konkoi is often served with fufu, a dough-like side made from cassava to soak up the rich sauce. Akwadu is a popular breakfast dish made from banana or plantain. It is cooked with water until reaching a thick doughy consistency. The plantains or ripe bananas, with their skins intact, are sliced lengthwise. Afterward, melted butter is drizzled over them, followed by a topping of orange juice, brown sugar and coconut flakes before being baked. The cuisine of Equatorial Guinea is diverse and full of flavor. From hearty stews to sweet and savory porridges, Equatorguinean cooking makes use of local ingredients to create beloved national dishes. Tell us in the comments below what you'd like to try. If you enjoyed this video on Equatorial Guinea, you'll love this next one.